Hello and welcome everyone. This is the uh, Toronto Tableau user group meet of November the 4th. I welcome you all to this virtual event. With me, I have Candy and Vanita from our team of coordinators here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to get things going. How many of us um, attended this virtual event? I didn't get a chance to go over all the live sessions, but for sure, let me get started with something. Well done. The winner is... So today our plan is to go over your experiences. We want to open the floor up towards the end. But um, before that, I wanted to thank you all for being a part of this community. We want to be inclusive and be interactive towards the end. But at the start, I want to introduce the four speakers who wanted to share the conference experience and one of them also has a few hands-on work to share. So without uh, me, um, going ahead with uh, my experiences, let me open the floor up to Roland. Roland, please start with your introduction. Uh, so we're just gonna do an introduction right now. It's Roland Schlichten and I currently work uh, as a director of wireless corporate reporting at Shaw Communications. Ojo, you're on mute and we can't hear you even before that. You might have to speak up. Okay. Um, thank you, Roland. Um, Atri, would you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi. Hi. I'm Atri. Uh, I'm working as a data science lead at Kraft Heinz. After Atri, we would have presentation from myself and my experiences, and then end the session with Anna, after which we will open up the floor for your um, discussion. So if you can raise a hand, um, that would be great. And then we will uh, relay your questions to the speakers or amongst the group. Thank you. Roland, it's, uh, please take it away, sir. Okay, great. Okay, I'll just uh, start by sharing my screen. Okay, I hope by now uh, everyone can see my screen. Um, and I'll assume that- uh, Not no quite. You can see it? Not yet. No. Not it yet. It didn't, it didn't come it up didn't. yet. I don't, I don't, my, my, I just see the people, so it doesn't seem to be working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. So maybe like un unshare and then reshare, maybe try. Sure, I can do that. Uh, I'll go back in. And I'll click share again. Okay. How about now? You can see it now. That's Perfect. good. Yep. Excellent. All right. Um, so as, as mentioned earlier, uh, Roland Schlichting, Saw Communications. Uh, you'll see I have a couple of badges. Uh, I got those uh, this year. 
uh, instead of uh, commuting to work, I did those uh, in the mornings I would normally commute in the GO train. So um, hats off to uh, Tableau for uh, allowing my, myself and my team to uh, get a few badges and uh, increase our uh, awareness of the product and uh, become better skilled at it. Uh, so a lot of people ask, how did I start with uh, Tableau? And it's uh, kind of interesting. It's, I, I think it's an interesting story. Well, I was working actually at, in marketing at CIBC. I first came in contact with Tableau when I happened to be walking past the peer's desk in a different department and just noticed quite a nice dashboard. I knew right away it was something I wanted to have. And I just wouldn't leave her desk until I was given a license. It turned out at CIBC, I was one of the first users uh, of the tool. This was either in late 2014 or early 2015. I don't really recall, but I do recall the version was an early version, perhaps 7.1. Uh, quite honestly, I was amazed at the capabilities out of the box. And I just immersed myself with the tool, uh, spending lunch hours on Google, Tableau e-learning modules, and I even got a Twitter account just so I could follow Mick over Monday. At the time, uh, my department was not huge into visualizations. And I don't think there was a lot of people that really were into visualizations at that time. Uh, if you were lucky, you got a pivot table, but most every output from my marketing analytics team was a CSV or a text file, if you can imagine. Uh, but you know, every once in a while, I would sneak in a viz here or there when I had a chance. And this got me recognized within the organization and not so long after, after a reorg, uh, something uh, familiar with CIBC or uh, this happens on, on occasion, uh, I found myself in a chief data office. And one of my roles was to help gain adoption for new tools that support driving, that support uh, data-driven decisioning. So as it turned out, I actually ended up training hundreds of people at CIBC uh, with Tableau, and I was one of the first power users in the company. I would host lunch and learns, webcasts. I also sat in many team meetings and helped people build their first dashboards. In one of those sessions, I'm quite sure it was where I first met uh, Vanitha. About 15 months ago, I left CIBC uh, and I returned to Telco to take over a reporting team. Uh, I immediately pushed Tableau as our primary reporting tool and Basically, the rest is history. So corporate reporting is my team. Uh, we do a lot of dashboards uh, and three things that we kind of live by. Uh, we try to do things very well, and they are the truth and nothing but the truth. Um, this is uh, the finance in me. Uh, our role actually lives in finance, but we do heavy data, data manipulation, lifting, and testing. Um, we're lazy. Uh, we want to make it easy for you to see the trends and we want to deliver this efficiently. So we automate as much as we can. Uh, we, we use business uh, and we're finally like the steel like an artist. And what we mean by that is we build off what we already created and we leverage the community. So each of us and our team, we're all each other's heroes and we use what everyone else uses in the team and we add our own little flair and style to it. And that's kind of um, how we work. I do have a Tableau public profile. Uh, you won't see a lot on there, but I did actually load something today um, for this presentation. All right, TC20 um, in uh, the movie. I like it. I like it a lot um, is, is why I thought about it. Um, and I'm thinking my Tableau conference uh, was a lot like most everyone else who's attending here virtually today. Uh, that means that I blocked off time through most of the afternoons on those three days. And I watched and I listened uh, as often as I could. Um, often jumping between meetings, I would jump in and out of sessions when I had that free time. I do have a fairly busy team and there's never really a shortage of work within our team. Uh, but I also encourage them to also try to find a time in the days uh, to attend some sessions. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But polling them after, they did mention that they learned something. And that's all I really wanted to hear, uh, that they weren't just sitting there aimlessly watching. They were actually learning something. I thought the 30-minute bite-sized sessions was perfect. Some of the demos were really good. Uh, some were flops. I'm not going to talk about the flops, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but I liked the conference overall. Uh, there was a lot 
uh, you can take back to the office and immediately use. I'm going to share one of those things that uh, I took back and um, I'm going to try to use it. Um, I watched the keynotes. Um, one of the highlights was watching Nate Silver from uh, 538 uh, and his uh, revisiting the signal and the noise. I thought that was pretty insightful. Uh, I liked, um, well, not a lot of content. I did like uh, the one session giving viewers a little love. Uh, the gentleman who hosted, he treated it like a radio show. So uh, while it wasn't really insightful, I did find it entertaining and I watched the whole thing. Uh, the three most uh, important things I took out of that conference, uh, number one, Iron Viz, really enjoyed it. Uh, number two, uh, speed tipping, one and two, those sessions were amazing. Uh, there's lots of tips and tricks that you can learn uh, and you learn them all in about 30 minutes. And they did this twice. Uh, and it was just well thought out, well presented. And I do believe the presenters did share their workbooks as well. And finally, um, the, the one that I uh, took some most heart to and when I thought was actually quite useful, uh, for me at least, was adding hidden context to your dashboards. And I gotta give kudos to the person who ran that session. Uh, he was excellent. Um, it's, this is something that people, um, that everyone can use. Uh, and it, the, the example they gave was leveraging floating containers, adding uh, the buttons to them and using those floating containers to show things like instructions or glossaries. So I have an example right now and I'd like to show you how it works. This morning, um, I was struggling because uh, all my dashboards, well, quite honestly, they're all, uh, they're all work related. So I quickly downloaded uh, some data from Strava. Uh, this is uh, my Strava for the last year or so. Uh, and so I create a quick dashboard. Um, I like to swim, bike and run. Uh, I do triathlon training, um, all of it now indoors. And what I wanted to do was basically just show the impact of what happened when COVID happened for me. So you could see my monthly workouts, whether it be swimming, biking, or running. And then all of a sudden you can see my gym closed halfway through uh, March and then everything kind of stopped. Uh, no, no more access to a pool. And uh, no, I'm not gonna swim in a lake unless it's a race. Um, biking, I, I try it a few times, but normally I like the group environment or riding with groups uh, less likely to, to get hit by a car. And then uh, I did some running during that period, uh, but I really want um, to, to use this as an example of what the hidden containers uh, look like. So this is actually a finished product, uh, but uh, and I just put my little, my emoji there that if I wanted to see what would happen if I brought in the hidden container. It gave me little snapshots of, of what, you know, of highlights. And then you could use this to create glossaries or you can use it for uh, instructions on how to use a tap, uh, a dashboard. Perhaps maybe you want to have a, a little comment that says, you know, you, you know, move the slider or to change the dates. You could do that. Uh, I just did this quickly this morning and, and really it's, it's not a lot of hard work. Um, and if you'd like, I could show you how to do it. I have a PowerPoint version uh, with live demos, you never know. Um, but we're gonna go do uh, the, uh, we'll go right to Tableau. So the first thing you do uh, when you, when you wanna create um, this type of uh, file is you go into dashboard and you actually export your image. When you export the image, you're gonna paste that into PowerPoint and, and it would look, one second, let's do this again. Let's go right here. So it'll look like this in PowerPoint. The, the next thing you're gonna do is actually just insert a box. So you're just gonna create a box and you're gonna and you're gonna place it over this. And it's, it's just as simple as what I just said. You're just creating a shape and you're just gonna create that. So let's just pretend I already did it. It's here and I've actually made it transparent. I did, so I did add some transparency to it. 
In this case, it's at 65% and I'm using the color black. And then you go in and, and you just key in what you want to key in. So you create boxes with little arrows and you say maybe in this case, I, I typed into a text box, the pool was closed and I put a little arrow or this is the day of the week, these are the days I'm most busy. And then you hide the back image and you take this image and you paste it into Tableau. So when you do this, it's actually quite simple. I know I'm flying through here, but it's only because I only have a little bit of time. Uh, you would go in and you would just add a bit, an image. In this case, it has to be floating. So you take a floating image, like a vertical image like this, however big you want to make it at the moment. And then you would drag your, your new image that you just saved or made a copy of it and hit shift when you do it. So it fills the box and you would choose it. Uh, so hopefully I have it handy. Demo, demo right here. I'll just click demo, click okay. You center fit it. Okie dokie, it's there. You then choose a container or you select a container and you're just gonna bring it over uh, the page. And I'll just do this quickly. And you're already halfway there. The next piece is just to simply hit the down carrot and you're gonna take the show hide button. So when you use this, it pops open a little box here over to the left. This is your show hide button. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Whoops, may have lost it. Undo and I'll go back. I'll just pop it here for now and make it just slightly bigger. Um, and you can add even your own little icons to it, just so you know what. So you can add the button and it can help people. Maybe you have something that says, you know, click here for instructions. Um, that would actually be very helpful for this. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to choose something else. Um, here, my little, my emoji. And then when the item is shown, if I want to move back to the to the worksheet. I'll just choose this for now. Click OK. And it's done with Alt and and clicking that image. It goes back and forth. So that I think it's a really nice little option that you can have. Uh, and it works just fine in Tableau Public. So here it is in Tableau Public. And live demo. And there it is. And then I guess have a different icon to go back and forth. So I found this really helpful. I hope you guys did too. Um, but that's all I really wanted to share. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. If anyone has any questions or if they want to save it to the end, go right ahead. Otherwise, you can move on to the next person, Ojo. Ojo, you need to unmute. Okay, Ojo, you're on mute. Better now? There you go. Except you're not very loud. Am I not? My volume's all up. I don't know why. So let's try the no headphones strategy. Is it better? Yep, much better. Thank you. So uh, let me uh, open the floor up to Atri. Atri, introductions, please. Thank you, Rohan. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Atri. I am. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Just a second. Are you able to see my screen? Good. Um, I, uh, I actually, I'm uh, a little bit about myself. I work as a, a data science lead at uh, Kraft Heinz. Um, I'm a data science professional with a uh, background in, um, in different industries, uh, airlines, steel manufacturing, um, CPG, and oil and gas industries. Um, recently, I kind of uh, I moved to Toronto, and you know, I'm, uh, like I, I, I got the job at I'm at Kraft Heinz, leading their data science initiative, and um, it's kind of interesting where 
we are trying to actually uh, use different visualization tools, the visualization techniques at the same time, working with uh, different data science models to advance along this analytics maturity curve. The way I got introduced to Tableau, it was a uh, few years back, I think around 2014 or 15, maybe around that time, uh, I was developing a lot of optimization models. The models were having around thousands and thousands of variables in it. And the way we are using the models was looking at the very few variables and uh, looking at the very few indicators, such as the objective function and all, to understand how good the model was. However, I feel like you know that's there's more things that can be done with the model, and we are not using this optimizer properly because we are not having the visibility of the data that is that it is generating. And that's why uh, I started using visualization, and uh, ta and Tableau was the go-to tool because it was quite user friendly and anything can be set up very quickly and with powerful visualizations to understand the models. And that's how we started using Tableau and, uh, and since then I'm using um, Tableau for visualization. So this year, you know, we all know like, you know, it's an unprecedented time and um, uh, for this Tableau conference 2020, we all, it's a kind of a, virtual conference that we had. So I had certain few expectations from this conference and wh what actually inspired me to actually join this, uh, to participate in this conference. Uh, first one was of course, to learn. Uh, there's so many things to learn in, 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 in Tableau. Every year Tableau is coming up with new features and there's so many new visualization techniques and uh, visualization uh, best practices that are that are evolving. I'd like to participate and learn most of them as much as possible. And second of all, and the most important thing is to connect and network with like-minded individuals and share uh, knowledge and discuss the challenges that we face day to day in uh, creating dashboards. So when I actually look at these sessions, uh, this conference. I view that there are two types of things that I can look at. One is, as of course, the sessions, okay? Uh, and of course, another part is the networking event. We have these branded in, in, in Tableau conference. This conference was actually jam-packed with, you know, a lot of inspiring talks and educational contents with over like 300, 300 sessions. And it was actually impossible to uh, catch everything live. And thankfully, uh, most of the sessions are now available on demand on the conference website. And I found like there are a lot of inspiring talks that happened and the keynote speakers were excellent. To kick off that uh, conference, CEO Adam Selipsky, he delivered the opening keynote highlighting how the power of data is helping us uh, better understand this year's biggest stories, including uh, COVID-19, um, the fight for racial justice and economic crisis. He also stressed upon the importance of timely data from multiple data sources and how it can be visualized properly uh, to come up to decisions. And also the Tableau's commitment to uh, better access uh, of this COVID-19 data hub to um, again, they take better decisions for, uh, from this kind of data sources. The another inspiring talk that actually like uh, was very mind blowing and was very memorable was data in action uh, from a chief analytics officer of city of New York, Kelly Jean. She shared that in this, pro in this crisis situation, how uh, data was used uh, and, using Tableau to guide ambulances, ambulances where to go, which, which care units are available, which hospitals to go. And this is a kind of a data in action where we are using data to decide uh, in such critical moments. So something which is very uh, a topic of my heart of like, you know, applying data in real world scenario and taking actions out of it. And this was a very best 
very good use case of that. And I'll remember this talk because of this uh, application of Tableau and visualization techniques to uh, take some actions out of it. And finally, of course, Dr. Michael McAfee, his uh, presentation on uh, how data along with the strong leadership, uh, leadership skills can uh, help leave the veil of ignorance of systemic uh, racism and oppression and also promote e economic uh, equity. So these were really inspiring talks, which, uh, which I really enjoyed. And then there were, again, informative sessions. And when I look into these informative sessions, I actually classified them into two hubs. When I actually looked at the schedule, I found uh, there was a lot of contents related to visualization and Tableau. How can we actually uh, improve, like, take the best practices and improve your visualization skills with the latest uh, features that Tableau released? And the other part was, was of course, like you know, the data science and technology. And when I look into this visualization and Tableau uh, sessions, a um, couple of them really uh, stood out. Uh, one of them was container uh, your excitement dashboard tips, which was about you know how again like you know these latest uh, features of Tableau uh, such as um, containers, show and hide buttons. Um, set and parameter actions with that, how can we actually uh, like they develop Walker's dashboards? And, and you know, the one that Roland showed was also a part of this, um, of this, um, um, of this session. And this was really uh, an important uh, and exciting tip that I'm actually using at work at this moment. Another part was, of course, which is interesting to me is uh, storytelling with data. And there were a lot of actually sessions around this topic, uh, dashboard design with user in mind, uh, adding context to engage your audience. All of them actually discussed about understanding your audience, what type of colors and uh, text to use so that you know, a message stands out well. So, this was very well uh, organized, and most of these uh, uh, sessions on these topics was very interesting. Finally, I'd like to say about the dashboard design with user in mind. It was more about how we can actually leverage the e UX design concept in our dashboards and develop application like dashboards. So this is also one of the key uh, session which I enjoyed. As I was mentioning about the data science and technology, I would say uh, there are a couple of sessions I really enjoyed, but most of these topics are very involved. And I think, uh, uh, like you know, the time that we had, we like you know, it was uh, we we like you know the the not most of the topics or not most of the uh, contents were much detailed which I expected to be a little bit more involved and technical, but it was a little bit of a high level, but still I enjoyed the session on Tableau Analytics Extension API, where you know, the, the speaker was explaining about how this API can be uh, e leveraged um, to uh, use the data science models and the customized data science models and make it more user-friendly using Tableau visualizations. So that's one of the key take that I would take from this, uh, from this session on, uh, on, on Tableau analytics extensions. Some other uh, topics were also there, which was about you know, uh, Tableau prep conductor and, you know, uh, on, and a session on data bricks about how to leverage data and data science models uh, to, make it, uh, to make faster uh, uh, like and quick uh, dashboards. Overall, I'd say uh, this session was really these sessions were really interesting, and um, and 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 I can I kind of learned something more uh, out of these topics. And finally, about the networking event, there was a uh, brand day that happened, and I was able to actually participate in one of them, uh, where you know the the topic was about like how uh, we can uh, explain uh, the data science uh, complex outputs very easily to business users. And uh, that is a kind of another topic of my heart. And uh, 
like we exchanged a little like a lot of thoughts on how we can make it better and shared our experiences our bad experiences and good experiences learn from each other so it was a interesting session so uh, this is about in summary about the uh, virtual uh, uh, conference of tableau one good part i just want to conclude in uh, of this uh, this uh, my uh, talk by saying that you know this virtual conference was good in a way because it was very easy to switch back from one session to another and that was i would say like you know uh, one of the key highlight of this uh, virtual session which i enjoyed the most and uh, if you have any questions i can take it now or uh, we can discuss later all right so uh, thank you atri uh, for sharing your experiences um i wanted to share that i've been in the tableau community for a long time and i have followed some amazing zen masters i'll share you my journey of tableau my experience of 2019 and the conference this year which was virtual tableau ish so we are part of a community and that's something i wanted to share it's not about me atri rolan vanita or candy it's about us you're open to come forward and meet us that's what the community is all about and one of the vehicles of doing that is the tableau user group so this is time for action you want to pick this and join today and as you do you might find yourself come to the toronto tableau user group page and register then the thing i did next was download the 14 day trial and watch the videos i was so hooked when i first came across tableau way back when and i started following zen masters today we have a few hall of fame zen masters andy Josh, Steve, and Steve presented to us as part of our uh, Toronto user group. Mentors shared about his experiences and ran an entire presentation on best practices. If you want to follow them, you could do that, and at the same time, get the download the starter kit dashboard. Download the content from there, and. build shape learn as you go as you mature at your enterprise or your company implement blueprint that's what i did that's the biggest takeaway for me from last year as with this year this is something that i'm thinking more around data governance and when you talk about data governance the part that comes into mind is tableau is this awesomely powerful vehicle of uh, drawing something from your data designing at the speed of thought so if you are as amazed as i am make use of this opportunity and start your journey to me tableau conference last year was a coming together of people from different walks of life it was a holy grail a mecca for data lovers this experience of tc20 as a virtual event was very different for me i missed the interaction part i missed the energy and the openness but there were great content and some of them i have bookmarked to watch later because i missed them happening live but i didn't miss iron biz and there is something that you could do you could go to the community and look for these resources over there connect with us and get started so tc20 for me was a zone of inspiration those 3 days of power pack inspiration that would drive me and keep going with my t
Tableau journey. And I would want to thank all the Zen masters, Steve Wexler, and especially um, Hall of Fame. He um, joined our, uh, heard about this initiative at the conference in 2019 and agreed to be a part of getting started our year. So last year we did five, um, including this, Toronto user group meets. This is an additional. So for me, it's a matter of joy that I get to share both of my experiences and share my story of how I happened to do Tableau. I'm hands-on, but at this point, let me move ahead to show what hands-on capabilities Tableau 2020.3 has. Anna, please go ahead. Hi, Ojo, thank you very much. That was awesome to hear from all of you. I'm gonna share my screen now. So um, this is going to be my quick agenda. I'm just gonna give a quick, quick introduction and then I'm gonna share what I learned from the conference, which was relationship with the in operator calculation and the predictive modeling. So how did I get started with Tableau? So first of all, my name is Ana Paula. I'm a student at uh, Ryerson University. I'm in my fifth year. And since my first year, I got involved with uh, um, a student organization. And uh, our job there was to bring professionals to teach us analytics. And one of the tools that I've learned, or I had a workshop, was uh, Tableau. After that, uh, I participate on a data visualization competition with uh, Deloitte and CIBC. And the tool was Tableau. Our objective was to um, create a visualization and tell a story with uh, data. I did not, my team did not win this uh, competition, but uh, that helped me to get my first job, my first co-op job at RBC as a project control officer. And my job was to actually build the dashboards for, um, for one of the teams in the IT department. Uh, so I did all my co-op jobs at RBC uh, five of them, but I actually stayed for two years at RBC in different uh, roles and also as a contractor and as um, part time of, because of the skills I learned with Tableau. And I like that uh, Ojo was mentioning of uh, watching YouTube videos. I've done a lot of YouTube videos. I've done a lot of uh, um, watching what the Zen masters do. I like to watch uh, the, the Tip Tuesday, uh, no, all, all, all of those. So um, then after that, uh, I, I was invited by Ryerson to develop a boot camps, Tableau boot camps for students. So I developed those um, training content, and now I facilitate my peers for, for the business students. So what are my takeaways from the conference? Uh, first, I found that it was uh, very excellent and exciting to have it online. One, we don't have to go and have incurred the costs. <laughs> As a student, that is a plus to me. Um, also, um, it gave me the opportunity to see uh, things that I wouldn't have seen if it wasn't online. Um, but there was one problem. Actually, there were a lot of problems. I did not take time off. Therefore, I did not uh, focus on all of the of all of the things that I book on my calendar. I was watching between classes. I have a lot of classes and I have uh, tutoring sections. So I end up watching maybe one thing and then I was multitasking. So I did not do well, to be honest. 
However, there is a thing that is very good this year that they made this uh, available for you to watch uh, online. So here is the link if you're interested, just go to the link and then you can uh, sign in and then you can learn from it. So my takeaways from the conference was the relationship, uh, how it changed, and also was the in operator calculation that is amazing. I really like it. It's actually one of my favorite. And one uh, another thing that I've learned was the predictive modeling. I'm going to do a quick demo. I didn't learn much about it. It's more like statistical analytics. So I just learned a little bit of it to replicate. And, but there is also one little thing that I wanna quickly show you is the animation that is new for Tableau 2020. Although it's not the 2020.3, but it's a pretty cool um, tool. Now, um, I'm going to just show here um, about relationship. So many, maybe uh, some of you or all of you already know about the relationship and the difference between relationship and joy. Uh, I used a lot of relation, creating relationship when I was at RBC because uh, our data was um, coming from all different sources and in different forms, the SQL Server or SQL Queries or MIS, uh, Cube Data. Thank goodness, uh, one of our team members created a database for the Cube Data because I could never understand how to connect with Cube Data. And but we use a lot of a relationship. So I, when I start to de develop the boot camps for Ryerson, we, I collected data from uh, stats. Actually, this is based on the data visualization that we had. And uh, I think back on, on that, um, that dashboard we work on. But what we wanted to do, it was uh, to identify geographically what were the kind of students that were coming, their gender, what was the program that they had to, they were studying here, and where would the international students go to study certain pro, pro, uh, in certain places? But also, I had another question. Uh, I also wanted to find out uh, what uh, was uh, the STEM. Um, this is a little okay. But that's okay. So I wanted to find out uh, what were the STEM programs and who were taking uh, most of the related STEM program. So this is uh, my first dashboard that I created, but I want to show you something. This is version 2019.2. So when I go here to my data source, uh, my data is, um, for me to, to bring this together, I didn't want to join them. But if, if you brought, brought it both together, it would automatically join. And then it wouldn't give me the result I was looking for because I just wanted to make one connection that was their geographic location. So this is messing up my whole thing. So it didn't work for me. So what it, now we have what we had to do was then go and bring in one at a time. So I would come here at a new data source, and then I would have to bring in my other data source, and it would be very laborious. Anyway, now what is different? from the 2020.3 um, is that I can now go to my data source and instead of joining this, uh, joining this data or bring in one at a time, I can bring in and then connect. So this soft line here now it's called my noodle. So that's how I do the, the uh, relationship. Notice that this is not a join, it's a relationship. So there are many ways that you, uh, similar to join, 
is the cardinalities. What is your cardinality? The default for Tableau is a many to many, but uh, let's say if you're analyzing your sales data in one order, you may have many products and then you, one product may be in different orders, but maybe one uh, shipping uh, may be only in one order. So it would, but one order could be many different shippings. So here is how you would edit your relationship. And also you can add the connection. So the way I want it is I wanted to join my data that I have in geographic because this is automatically is what the Tableau picked for me because this is the two um, relationship, the two fields that are similar. However, if I want, I can add more, um, more ways to relate my, my data. I have uh, date, reference date would be one of them, but my reference date is a little funny because this data was collected from Stats Canada and um, open sources and open Canada, something like this. So the format of the data is different, but this is not the problem. Is that the problem is that my whole data is aggregated because they just aggregated by number of students from a certain year. So that wouldn't work for me. That's why I, another thing I could do could be a student type, but I, I don't trust much on this. So that's why I do by geolocation. So when I go back to my um, dashboard here, I can now add a filter. So let's see if I already add my filter. So I'm gonna add my filter. No, I didn't add. So I'll go there and add. Because what I also wanna know is what are the type of students. So let's say that uh, I wanna find now all my type of students, and then I just add my filter for my type of students, because I want to make my analysis as international students. Notice that this is not related. So previously, I would have to come uh, to my data, so to my dashboard. I broke it, sorry. Uh, I would have to come here when I add my filter, I would have to go back and manually make the relationship right in here. I would right click and then sorry data, and then I would add a, edit a relationship. Now it's much easier. I'm gonna take this out of the way because I want to be using this. So now uh, all that I have to do is apply and all using this uh, that on all of this dashboard. And now I will see uh, the difference of my international students versus all of the students. So for example, in Ontario, females are enrolled in university. I could also create a, a filter to see now which one would be um, of oh, oh, how many of those students are enrolled in those programs. But for a demo's purpose is uh, I just wanted to show international students. So now I see the amount of female students and so on and so forth. So this was about relationship. So next thing I would like to show is the in operator. So for my one of my other um, boot camps that I have. I had, we created this an analysis of um, our, um, this is um, the data from Tableau, the Superstore, the, the training data. And what we had was we wanted to find out what was our profit and our, our losses by region. And also we wanted to analyze it category. So we've noticed here that uh, there are some uh, problems. Some uh, of our subcategories are having problems, especially like tables. 
Now, let's say that if I wanted to see only an analysis of uh, Texas, uh, Illinois, or Pennsylvania, and Ohio, I could create a set to um, make, uh, to use as a filter, to filter out. Or I, what I did before was I created this, um, I think I may have it in here. I created this. So let's say that if I wanted to find only the attributes that are in this, uh, in these states, if I wanted to find only these states and bring only these states, previously I would have to do a if statement. So I would have to add if state, then Illinois, uh, equal Illinois, Illinois, then return, please return the name of the state. Or if I wanted, I could uh, return uh, the value of my sales or profit or percentage, whatever I wanted to bring. And then I would have to do one by one. And there was another case that I wanted to, um, determine what month was referred to quarters because uh, in the financial in industry, we use uh, um, our year, our quarters is to, for example, first quarter start in November. So if I wanted to determine from my data that November actually referred to quarter one, I would have to go with one by one, one by one. So that would take too long. What I like now is that instead of that is the in operator. For those that work with SQL queries, uh, may be familiar with the in operator. I learned this, uh, a colleague at RBC taught me this part because when I was doing my, uh, my queries, uh, when I learned in classroom, <laughs> my queries, I would say, a state equal Illinois. And then I would say a state equal <laughs> So I would do like all of this. And then he taught me this in. And then when Tableau creates the in, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Cause it saves me from all of that list I showed you before. Now I just, I, I pre-typed this because otherwise I would be here the whole night with the spelling of the, the words. But now I will show you what these do. So for instance, let's say that if I wanna put my states in here, oh, sorry, states. So if I have my states here, and then let's say that I have my profit because uh, that's what we want to find out was the, the problem with our profit. So I'll bring my profit. And then I wanted to find the, um, those states that had problem before I would just add, if I add here, you will see that I have Illinois and wherever because it's, uh, it's a yes or no question, but instead of a say false, true or false, I put the name, right? But it's a binary pretty much. So now with this new calculation with my binary in, where did I go? Thanks to this search bar that Ojo actually taught me how to do it. Thank you, Ojo. So now I have my states here as a true or false. So if I go back to my dashboard, I already add uh, this filter here. Let's say that now I wanna do my analysis just based on those uh, four states that I see that's pretty, pretty red. So now I have my KPIs with my, still my profit. But now I see that although uh, we have a lot of problems in Texas, Texas is doing uh, pretty well in technology. But previously, I wouldn't have seen it because uh, I would, I would, I didn't know that. So now I see. So we, with this functionality, I believe that it gives um, business uh, decision makers 
a lot of uh, power to find the uh, um, patterns themselves. So we see that the things are not doing doing very well, but I think this uh, tool empowers um, managers and decision makers to find more insights. So this is was the in operator. The next one is predictive modeling. Predictive modeling is very good for uh, data scientists. I believe that Atri would like this. <laughs> So with my limitations from my classroom statistics, what I wanted to do is uh, if I want to predict uh, uh, my sales based on my previous sales, let's say that I will, will predict my, um, my 50% of sales. So I, 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 again, I typed in in advance. So let's see if I can find the, Ah, here we go. So this is now a function, a functionality in Tableau. Oh, I'm gonna go back to show you something else here related to the in, the percentile in. Previously, if I wanted to create this um, in statement, we did not have it built in. Now, when we go back, same go for this modeling. We don't have it either. However, if we go back to Tableau 2020.3, we already have here the function for us, which is a table calculation, love table calculation. So here we have, those are the new uh, functionalities from Tableau. If you wanna learn more, uh, there is all the description and how you do that. So I used for example, the quartile because I wanted to predict the 50%. So that's a straightforward. So 50%. So what I want to do is I want to predict my sales and quantities. So I just, and, and remember that you need to do the sum because you need to sum all of your sales and then use the quantity you, um, you sold. And then when I add my uh, model quartile to my sales, let's say here, notice that my prediction is uh, quite accurate. I mean, it's pretty close. So that was uh, the last one. I, I have to show you this because it's pretty cool, although it's from uh, earlier versions of 2020, but I really like this one here. It's uh, the animation. So I, let, I created some, I created a parameter for dates and I want to show my, month over month growth based on my customer segment. So I have all my customer segments in here. And then I have how much by category in this particular month was sold. I didn't put a filter in here to connect, uh, create a relation between those. But the idea is to show how to use animation. So I have uh, uh, all my sales and profit and so on. And then I have my quantities and I see that my percentage of profit is uh, office supply at the month of uh, May, 2020 is doing quite too well. I wonder if because everybody's working from home now. <laughs> so lots of office supplies. Anyway, so if I use my parameter, uh, let's say, let's compare May previous year. So if I'll go to May previous year. Hey, Anna, do you want to go into the play mode and show them quickly? Because uh, we want to open up the floor for experiences. Yes. So all that you have to do is, um, oops, sorry, go back to the dashboard. All that you have to do is to go here to um, format animations and then you choose to have it on or off and then you can set up for how long it is going 
So let's say if I put for 50 seconds, it's going to be way fast. I mean, half a second, it will be way faster. So whenever you change your month, then everything will change. 50 seconds is maybe a little, I mean, one second is going to be a little slower. And then you see the transition, which before we didn't have. And with that, I will open up for questions. All right, then. So, uh, Candy, let me hand this over to you to do the wrap. We might have um, um, the tug um, next year. We definitely want to close this year on a positive note, even though these times are very difficult. Stay safe, stay warm. Candy, please take it away. Thank you. Okay, first, I think before we wrap, um, a couple of things. I think we'll open it up to everybody uh, so everybody can, uh, you know, if, if you want to share or ask Roland or Autry or uh, Anna or any of us uh, about our experience at um, a Tableau or even at a conference or even provide a, you know, comments on what your experience was like, we'd all like to open it up to a uh, discussion. Quickly before I do that, I'd like to, I think Kim had a, from Tableau had an announcement to make uh, that he wanted to make here. So if you wanted to do that now, Kim. Hey guys, it's Kim. Um, so I'm a practice manager at Tableau. Um, and uh, I know we try to get you guys together and, you know, kind of share stories about your experiences and uses of, of Tableau. And, you know, being that this group is kind of like the highly skilled advanced users, we thought we would try to do some promotions in terms of getting you guys some training and enablement that um, you know, would help you guys progress your, your careers as well as progress um, you know, your skill sets so that your analytics journey within your organization would be much quicker, right? So you know, I was talking with Kai, who's uh, the solution engineer for Canada and you know, we thought, what could we do to, you know, help you guys um, get some better training and at, you know, a decent price for, you know, coming to, to uh, the Toronto user group. So I'm just going to share my screen quickly. And I, I don't want to take up too much time because I know you guys have some other content here. But um, let me just see if I can share my screen. Let's see here. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see that okay? Yes, so sir. What, yeah, so what we've been, uh, what we were able to do is knowing that you guys are uh, some of the more advanced users of Tableau, um, the first thing that we got for you guys was around visual analytics training. So if you guys are have done desktop one, desktop two, and you guys are looking to now take the step to doing the visual analytics course, which is more, more advanced course. We've got a 10% uh, discount in terms of doing that uh, instructor led course. Uh, that's for a group of 15. So obviously if you guys have folks in your organization that are at around the skill, same skill level, they're ready to take that next um, jump. We can offer that to you guys. Um, you know, that, that's something that I think would be beneficial to folks like yourself. Um, the other thing we wanted to kind of remind you guys around was around the training workshops. So during the Tableau conference, we offered these one day training workshops, which are more like condensed versions of the different training uh, programs. So desktop one, desktop two, Tableau prep and visual analytics. Normally those are two to three day workshops. We condensed them down to one. Um, in doing so, you know, obviously during the, the, the Tableau conference, you can get those in pretty quick and you know, at a much cheaper price. So we're extending that offer until the end of November. You guys would just have to sign up before end of November and then, you know, obviously take those um, courses before the end of the year. Now that's both for individual seats as well as classroom. If you guys do classroom, it's, you know, 5,000. And if you guys do the individual course, it's, um, you know, 300 per seat, right? Um, we also now are offering 
a new e-learning data literacy series, which is uh, five hours of, of free e-learning time that'll basically help establish, you know, just some common language around data literacy. And, you know, it, it'd be great for folks on your team that have just started their journey. It would be a great starting point for them to kind of go through that, learn the, you know, the ins and outs of, of uh, <coughs> the data literacy. Um, and that's just a, a great starting point, right? And then from there, they can kind of advance onto the other training courses that we've got. And then the last one I've got is just around the certification. So I don't know what percentage of this group is already certified, but um, until December 7th, all of our certifications are 20% off. And then uh, the one desktop specialist exam, we've got a bundle that's 40% off. Basically that ex uh, bundle will have e-learning that's specifically catered to passing that exam. It'll also allow you guys to write the exam twice. So, uh, you know, if you, you know, do the one time you guys fail, you can kind of do the second time, not, no, no issues. Uh, it also allows you guys access to a forum of users that are taking that same exam. You guys can bounce ideas off each other. You also have live Q&A sessions with uh, an instructor, right? And you know, all of that is just kind of centered around helping you guys study and get ready for that desktop specialist exam, which is, you know, for some pretty advanced um, users. That's basically it. If you guys have any questions on the training enablement, um, I'll leave my email address in the chat. You guys can just email me, but, you know, we obviously were trying to cater all the e-learning, all the learning and all the training enablement for this crowd to make sure that we continue to foster um, advancing your, your skill set, advancing your careers. Okay. That's it for me, Candace. Great, thanks. Uh, so